Hey, welcome to NASA Launchpad. I'm your host, Justin Tully. You know, NASA has come to understand that the only way to really comprehend the workings of our planet is to view the Earth as a whole system. Earth system science is an integration of many scientific disciplines, including geology, biology, chemistry, physics, oceanography, meteorology, computer science, and all other sciences that study life and the Earth. Here's Dr. Melody Avery of NASA Langley Research Center. NASA scientists use modern technologies to measure key features of our planet, such as concentrations of gases in the atmosphere and the temperature of the ocean in many locations. Satellites orbiting our planet provide enormous amounts of data that scientists use to try to understand how our planet works and the changes that are happening. Aided by the expanded use of the internet and visualization technology, we are better able to understand the impact of human activity on Earth systems and the impact of Earth systems on human activities. Everything in Earth's system can be placed into one of four major subsystems, land, air, water, and life. We call these four subsystems spheres. Specifically, they are the geosphere, or land, atmosphere, or air, hydrosphere, or water, and biosphere, or life. Let's learn a little bit about each one. Suppose you were to slice the Earth in half and view its different layers. What would it look like? The lithosphere contains the hard, solid land of the planet's surface, called the crust. The semi-solid layer underneath the crust is called the mantle. The liquid layer near the center of the planet is the outer core, and a solid, dense center makes up the inner core. The crust is very uneven. There are high mountain ranges like the Rockies and Andes, shown in red. Huge plains or flat areas like those in Texas, Iowa, and Brazil, shown in green and deep valleys along the ocean floor, shown in blue. The atmosphere contains all the air in our system. It extends from the planet's surface to only 100 kilometers above. The atmosphere itself is composed of a number of layers. The middle portion of the atmosphere, the stratosphere, protects the organisms of the biosphere from the sun's ultraviolet radiation. When air temperature in the lower part of the atmosphere, the troposphere, changes, weather occurs. As air in the lower atmosphere is heated or cooled, it moves around the planet. The result can be as simple as a breeze or as complex as a tornado or a hurricane. The hydrosphere contains all the solid, liquid, and gaseous water of the planet. The hydrosphere extends from the Earth's surface downward several kilometers into the lithosphere and upward about 12 kilometers into the atmosphere. Solid or frozen water can be found in the form of glaciers, ice caps, and icebergs. This is also called the cryosphere. Liquid water can be found in the form of oceans, rivers, lakes, streams, and groundwater beneath the Earth's surface. Gaseous water, water vapor, can be found in the atmosphere. The final sphere, the biosphere, contains all the planet's living things. This sphere includes all the microorganisms, plants, and animals of Earth. Within the biosphere, living things form ecological communities based on physical surroundings of an area. These communities are referred to as biomes. Deserts, grasslands, and tropical rainforests are three of the many biomes that exist within the biosphere. Can you determine what biome you live in? So why do we need to know about the Earth and its systems? The individual spheres of Earth's system have complex interactions with each other, creating changes in the system as a whole. Oceans affect climate on land, for example, and both natural and man-made environmental hazards in one part of the world affect other parts of the world. Just think how recent volcanic eruptions grounded air travelers all over the globe. There are so many people living on the planet, and each person needs energy like food, water, heating, and transportation. All of this energy, if used carelessly, can change the Earth's climate, deplete its ozone shield, and dramatically alter the number and kinds of organisms that share our planet and the Earth's system. But why does NASA study Earth systems? From the unique vantage point of space, scientists can see, and more importantly, understand more about these complex interactions between Earth systems. We can predict how dust storms in the Sahara might affect crops in the American Midwest, or how mosquito-borne diseases will spread. Over the past 50 years, Earth's population has doubled, grain yields have tripled, and economic output has grown sevenfold. Over a third of the U.S. economy, over $3 trillion annually, is influenced by climate, weather, space weather, and natural hazards all of which give us a powerful economic incentive to study Earth. Understanding the land, air, water, and life of our planet gives us the knowledge to best manage the world around us. So remember, you're part of the system too. 
It's up to you to make sure it works properly. And the best way to do that is to understand how the system works and what role you can play to meet the challenges of tomorrow. That's it for now. Until next time, I'm Justin Tully. Thanks for watching NASA Launchpad.